morning tubers back out this time to actually hopefully get some proper footage of my LK50 backpack. Um, again, I've decided to wander into a different part of Ashdown Forest. It's my view today. Now there are a couple of cars in the car park, which means there's dog walkers about. So we shall see how many we meet today. But I wanted to come to a bit more, where well, there was less pine and a bit more other trees so I could tie my poncho up perhaps. But we shall see. Um, it's mainly for the backpack today. So I'll find an area, get it out, show you what it's all about. Right, well here's the LK50 in all its glory. Uh, as my previous video, I lost all my footage. I did do a little sort of run round of the pack. Still frame, although there is a top missing off the other side and it's got wood on it, so I think it might be wrapped in wood there. Um, this is 1982, this pack, and according to Joe, uh, Hoop Bivy World Camper, it's definitely an LK50, certainly space-wise it is. Um, I've ordered a strap, a kidney belt thing to go on here, another recommendation by Joe actually, uh, just to take the weight off a bit, but actually today it wasn't too bad. But um, inside here, I'll give you a quick scan now of what I've got in here. I'm not taking everything out now, but I've got a uh, fairly long foldable saw, snacks, Crappiest knife in the world ever. Um, other side, I've got paracord, 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 and some of those ball bungees. Um, I won this off uh, a giveaway with Bushy Johnson, and um, he left some uh, ball bungees in there. Never even heard of them before, but I used them to hold up the tarp poncho uh, the other day and they sort of work like pressic knots if you doubled them over it's actually quite good but I won't open it all up now because I'm going to hang it somewhere else in a minute when I stop for a drink because I'm not stopping here because it's a bit too close to the road um, but that's just a general overview just in case I forget later what I forgot to mention, obviously these side pouches are not standard because on other packs they don't seem to have them. They've been sewn on afterwards. Pretty good job as well. I'm not sure if uh, Bushy Johnson put those on. I'm sure I saw a video of his with this pack uh, without them. So maybe he put them on. But you can put stuff down the back of it. There's a hole all the way through so you can put an axe or whatever. A small scaffold pole. <laughs> walking poles, whatever you want, um, down the side of them, but quite handy actually. But it obviously increases increases the weight slightly, but also increases the capacity. So it's probably like an LK, I don't know, 60, LK 55, LK 57.99999 recurring. I don't know, but it actually looks better, I think, with those side uh, pockets on. See you in a minute. Right, I actually decided to open her up get the stuff out so you can have a look. Um, it's got a weird 1982 toggle thing on there which is very simple. You just unclip it and now it opens. Now this is hanging so obviously when it's on the ground there's, uh, there's sort of more space in it but there's absolutely a ton of space in there. I mean look, I could probably half fill that again and also the look how much space you got under the lid. So you can really stack it up. So basically, all that, and that was probably a third field, if you include the space in the lid. 
so it can hold a massive amount. I mean, I had to really squeeze that into my normal day pack. Obviously, that's not a day pack, but um, it's quite comfy, actually. Um, now I'm used to it, it's not actually any worse than my normal day pack. Right, as you can see, uh, you, the um, pack comes with uh, very long straps, which makes it very expandable. So although I've probably got a third filled in there, maybe just slightly over, you can easily whack another two thirds in there. Um, I'll just do it up and sort of show you how much bulk it could probably take. You could put a sleeping bag on the top or underneath and anything else you want to strap to it. Very simple 1982 strap system. And there you have it. A bag with lots of straps. Okay, these don't look very comfy, um, they're not super padded, but they are actually very comfy surprisingly. I think the frame takes, obviously that's, a, that's its job, it takes a lot of the weight. So um, these really, yeah, super comfy. But I think if you were a wider, like a couple of years ago when I was a little bit wider, uh, three stone wider, they would probably dig in a bit there which is where the new kidney belt thing that's specially designed for this would come into play to help you. But um, we'll see, I've just ordered the belt really just to help alleviate a bit of the weight when I do fill it up completely. Uh, but I like it. Thanks very much, Bushy. I'm actually a little bit lost. There's Trail after trail after trail through here. Uh, just trying to find an open spot with a couple of trees. You know the type of place. Yeah, we we'll need some firewood. <laughs> Forestry guys have been going mad down here. That's an adder pit waiting to happen in the summer. <clears throat> They'll be making all their babies in there right now. Ugh. It's like a silver birch graveyard, look. <laughs> it's a real shame, isn't it? I think the storm's coming in. It's supposed to rain at 12 and it's now about 11. Who I stumbled upon. Little shelter. I love it when you stumble upon stuff like that in the middle of nowhere. There's actually so much choice, I don't know where to pitch up. It's horrible that, isn't it, when you have too many choices. Just thought I'd show you the pack in more detail. Straps, dust bolt, lift them here, to loosen, pull to tighten, fairly straightforward. There you go, one LK50. <laughs> so, out of all the trees and all the woods I got, <laughs> I still did a crappy job because if it rains, that's just going to pull 
Oh, I've done that so wrong. I'm going to adjust it. That's slightly better. But I've done it in the length configuration that way. Really, it's wasted. I should have done it that way. But I'm still learning. I'll take you for a look around. Hang on. There you go. Tied it to that tree here. So it's tight this side. Tight-ish. Right, can anyone tell me what these bloody things on the inside of my poncho are for? They're super annoying. I'm going to cut them off because I don't actually need them. I presume they're to draw your waist in, maybe. Tight around your waist and then... But it's on the inside, so I'm a bit... A bit flummoxed. But, anyway, it's... Uh, hood's tied up on the ridge line. Could be a little tighter here, so I could actually re-tighten that and higher it up a bit. Might do that. Right, that's a bit tight all around. That's not too bad, actually. <clears throat> It'll keep most of my body dry, but I should have really done it the other way. Yep. I'm not too displeased with that. It took me ages, though. If you look at my hyperlapse, well, you've probably already seen it. You'll see. Blends in fairly well-ish, apart from the hammock. Right, while I'm lying in my hammock, uh, waiting for my coffee to come to fruition, I thought I'd show you the inside of my little tarp, which isn't actually above my head. It's more above my feet, so I'd have to swap ends if it rained. But, um, yeah, I could still hear a road. I'm sort of, I'm near a, main roady sort of right over there but because the wind's blowing this way I can hear it when I mean, it's probably about two miles away but I still haven't seen anyone yet and this well used by dog walkers it's getting windy now so excuse the wind and it's gonna supposed to rain at 12 so it's in about 15 minutes I wasn't gonna wait out for the rain because I'm about three miles from the car <laughs> but if it rains it rains get to test the uh, poncho tarp which I'm quite impressed with actually um, it's made of ripstop polyester nylon I think uh, measurements are 210 long by 149 or 150 wide so it's um, for a poncho it's quite big I think the US ones US military ones are a bit longer but it comes down to about your knees and sort of covers most of your arms up, so you would you would be okay. Anyway, I'll show you the inside. You don't want me waffling on, do you? So, here it is. That's directly above my head, but the other end is more, more over that end. Uh, I took that loop out. I, I can put it back in. I didn't actually cut those tabs off, but that's the sort of thing I do. I cut stuff off and then go, ah, I needed that. But because it's on the inside, I can't see what the purpose is really, and it's not on the back. So you can't sort of tie it around your waist like uh, Rambo style when he made that thing on uh, First Blood. He made that like um, poncho type thing actually, out of some sort of sacking, Hessian sacking, after he f dived off the. Was it after he dived off the tree? Anyway, I'm rambling on about bloody Rambo. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'll bring you back when there's something more interesting. Yeah, I forgot to mention, on my previous video, because uh, I lost, uh, I had 47 minutes of footage. 26 of minutes of which was usable, which I did use. I put it all together, I uploaded it to YouTube, and for some reason, it put music over it, over the whole lot, apart from the first two minutes 
of my speech. Now, I know a lot of you don't want to hear me talking a lot, but there were some funny moments in there. <clears throat> I got caught by some horse riders who saw me last minute, uh, which I had some footage of. Uh, I got caught by a dog walker. He stumbled upon me, actually literally stumbled upon me. Um, coming the other way, he didn't see my tarp or anything, which I'm surprised at, but he just sort of stumbled on, upon me, which was quite funny. Um, and I was recording at the time as well. Um, but it was pointless leaving it all in because it didn't really make any sense to leave stuff like that in and also me talking and things like that actually facing camera. So I just wheeled it down what, what footage I had, dropped the volume right out and then put a new track over what I had. So that's why it's a bit of a mishmash. But I was so annoyed that I'd wasted five hours of buggering about in the forest <coughs> for, excuse me, so what I thought I had really good footage, you guys might not have thought so, but I thought I had some good footage and some funny moments couple of uh, comical bloopers which uh, just happened um, but anyway it's uh, it was good it was good but uh, it just annoyed me so that's why I've come out again to try and put the uh, poncho up and just have another day out really um, I can smell my meths burner and it's on my handles that's not good wind's blowing the wrong way uh, anyway I'll do, a, do a, a few other bits in a minute bye bye stop looking that way I need to look at the camera as lots of people don't do, they always look at themselves, which is easy to do, uh, just to see if you're in shot. But if you notice, I actually use my front camera as much as I can, so the quality's like Super HD rather than the rear camera, the one that faces me so I can see myself, because uh, that's just 720, I think. You can see all my spots and my wrinkles. Right, I'm not going to let it boil right up today because it's always so bloody hot because there's no... I don't add milk to it, but that's probably boiled enough for me. Um, maybe give it another minute. And then I'll be having my cafe. Right, you'd be pleased to know, people, that it is actually raining. Uh, only a couple of spots. I don't know whether to sit it out <laughs> just for the crack or go. Because I've got a three mile walk, but I can test my poncho on top of this, which probably won't make me sweat at all one bit whatsoever. Hey. But anyway, while I'm sitting in my hammock, I'm sort of straddled it. Not in a sexy way. I here you ask, but I'm straddled my, um, excuse me, straddled my um, hammock. Uh, let's just adjust you a bit. I'm actually on the front camera this time, so it's probably, the quality's probably not as good, which is good, because then you can't see my wrinkles. Uh, massive shout out to uh, Bushy Johnson, Stu, Bushy Johnson. I'll um, put the link to his channel in the description. He's the guy who won the bag off in the giveaway, and, um, yeah, brilliant. Oh, I absolutely love it, actually. When I first tried it the other day, it was a bit heavy, I must say, but you sort of get used to it. Um, and I think with these uh, kidney straps, it'll probably be spot on. I certainly fit a lot of kit in it, so I'm looking forward to doing an overnighter, which I'd, I want to do a solo. My first one, I want to do a solo wild camp, but I still don't really know where to go until I get my permission, Woods, which I have got permission. I'm just waiting to get in there because it's a big... It's attached to a massive house, it's 22 acres. And um, yeah, they've got lots of builders and stuff in and there's a little lane that goes up to it and it's just manic with diggers and stuff. So, but really that's not wild camping, is it? If I go into a permission woods and camp, it's not technically wild camping. So I don't know, I might, I've, I'm, I've got options to go wild camping with um, 
other tubers. Um, but I didn't know whether my first wild camp should be on my own, really. What do you think? Should I go on my Todd or should I do it with others? I'm a bit of a... I was going to say girl, I better stop saying that. I'm a bit of a wuss, should I say that word? I'm not that politically correct, but I don't like to offend people. Should I do my first one solo or with others? What do you reckon? Um, yeah, I'm a bit sort of scared of things that go bump in the night. <laughs> yeah, let me know what you think anyway. All you guys that I follow and watch and most of you guys that comment on my videos are proper hardened, hardcore wild campers. Um, so you can you can give me the lowdown. I'm not a great, I'm okay on the ground. I like camping. I've done absolutely tons of camping, but not wild. I've done I've been everywhere camping with my children when they were little, with my wife on my own. I've been camping, but in a campsite. So obviously it's totally different, and you've got all the facilities. But uh, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, should I go it alone? Should I do my first one with someone else? I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought there. Ground dwelling, yeah. So I'm, I'm good at inner tent and stuff. I haven't got a problem. I can put up any tent. So I was going to get like a Dutch hoop bivvy or something similar, which I quite like the idea of. I've got a bivvy. I've, in actual fact, I have done a world camp. Mm -hmm. My first one was with my son on the beach. I'll put that in the end thing, Ema Bobbers, end card or whatever you call it. I'll put a link to that uh, video just in case you haven't seen it. But... Ooh, totally forgot about that so I've already done one that was my first wild camp really um, and that was just with a bivvy no tarp nothing uh, but that was last May or June so it was fairly warmish um, so yeah I don't know what I'm on about really so I've done a wild camp it's my age you see memory memory man um, Anyway, that's why I wanted to get a, uh, uh, a hammock. I was going to get the front line, just a normal front line, but uh, Mike, uh, Black Country Woodsman, said get the XL because there's tons of more room in it, but it's a weight issue. I'm not, you know, I'm not the lightest. I don't carry like loads of lightweight gear like titanium and stuff, but I don't like to carry a lot of weight if I can help it. So I don't know how much extra the normal front line is to the XL. But uh, yeah, I like hammock. And I think being off the ground will help me on a solo, purely because I'm not that keen on bugs and things that crawl around. And I certainly don't like snakes. And I know they won't be out at night, <clears throat> but around here, that's why I don't come to Ashdown Forest much and traipse through heath and stuff in the summer, because they are everywhere in the summer. It's like proper adder city here. In actual fact, all the adders in the world, in the UK, move to Ashdown Forest um, for the summer. They will come and visit their relatives, hang out, chill, slither about, bite dogs, bite anything that moves, bite adults. Um, and I don't want them to bite me, so... Um, yeah. Don't like snakes. Don't even like worms. Don't even know why I'm doing this, really. Do you? <laughs> See you later. I love the outdoors, though. Right. Listen, hear it, rain, it's raining, <laughs> only a little bit, I think I'm going to pack up soon anyway, I think the poncho would actually keep me dry, I'll probably find out on the way back because I've got three miles to walk. I spy with my little eye something beginning with a hole <laughs> where I didn't do the Thing up tight enough but it is actually raining now Can you hear it so this will be the test so i'm going to sit it out for a little bit and see i'm going to tighten that hood up well i've got my pack down there which is well covered from the raid so that way was actually quite good covered there got my tripod underneath but i'm slightly skew with which is a bit annoying. Still a tiny hole there though. So I need to practice at that. I've tightened the drawstring up and tied it again so that would actually come through there. It probably will. But if I move over, 
and a little bit I'm totally covered welcome to my house rain stopping so I've taken my um taken my hammock down but enough headroom to stand under this rainwater go that way I think it's a better setup than what I did do. Before I pack up completely, just wanted to do the no trace thing where I had my little uh, trangia. Just there, I just made a coffee today, no lunch today. I'll uh, have lunch when I get home probably. But uh, just so you all know, I know everyone does it. Can be a bit boring, can't it? But just so you know, I don't leave any trace if possible. This, um. <clears throat> string rope whatever you want to call it i got from uh, decathlon it's bloody brilliant although it's very visible it doesn't do up super super tight so you can undo it when it's wet so i'm going to see if they actually do like a darker one and get some more of it although it's a bit heavier than paracord it's actually quite good well there's the poncho in all its glory back in its stuff sack as with all stuff sacks it's a bit tight to get in there but uh but uh, but uh, but uh, but um, <clears throat> very good actually. But I might change. I might just get a small, uh, extra small uh, dry bag, and use that because it'd be easier to get in and compact. But not bad. Took me about I don't know five minutes to take everything down, so not too bad. Right, I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed watching like to do all the usual stuff big box little box cardboard box big box little box cardboard box you know what to do cheers now I know the although the straps are long uh, that gives you massive amount of um, whatever massive amount of uh, <laughs> strappage take two now I know the straps are long but uh, that helps um, fucking hell take three now I know the straps are long but that gives you a massive amount fucking hell <sighs> just go home Lee just go home right take four I know the straps are long but they um, help you to do fucking something I don't know I've had enough they're long anyway those straps and they, uh, you can strap stuff to it, and lots of it, um, because they're expandable. That's the word I was looking for, expandable straps. <laughs> well, there you have it, guys. All ready to go. Hopefully you can hear me over there. Oh, bugs already. Leave no trace, left no trace. Gatwick flight path, can't help it.